Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2003, it's a Honda Accord, and we're going to be changing the front brake rotors, the brake pads, and we're also going to be changing the front calipers. And the reason we're going to be changing the calipers is because the left side is staying applied. One of the, free, the slide pins are actually frozen, so it stays applied and it, it winds up prematurely warping the rotor and causing the brake pedal to pulsate. So I'm not taking a chance. I'm going to replace the caliper on this side as well uh, because most likely it's going to be very stiff as, as well. This got about 180,000 miles on it and they're still original. So let me show you what kind of tools you're going to need and then what we're going to do exactly to get this job done. Okay, first thing we're going to do is this is our new rotor. We are going to clean it off with brake cleaner to get all of this oil off of here. We're going to need a hammer such as this, um, a hook to hold the caliper up out of the way while we're working, a driver like this to remove the screws that actually hold the caliper in um, uh, the uh, rotor to the hub itself, a pry bar such as this or a very big screwdriver, whatever works for you. A ratchet with a fairly long handle like this because you'll get additional leverage. Uh, just so you know, this is a 17 millimeter socket. We're going to need a 12 millimeter socket and also a 14 millimeter socket. We're going to need a screwdriver such as this so we can actually um, pry anything out of the way or whatever. And we're going to need a pair of pliers like this or a tool that they actually have to pinch off the brake line while we remove it from the car. And of course, we're going to need brake pads to put it back uh, to put in the vehicle and my synthetic brake grease. So, all right, this is what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do is we're going to come in here. We're going to take out that screw there and that screw there. Uh, we're going to use that driver to get those out. But if you don't have a driver, you could hit it with a, uh, with a drift and it'll loosen it up and get them out. I will show you how to do with a drift. We're going to pry back in that piston right inside here and then we're going to pinch off the brake line up in here someplace. We're going to remove that bolt right there. You know, the light in here. That's better, right? Okay, we're going to take out that bolt there and this bolt down on the bottom right here. And then we're going to remove the caliper from the vehicle after we loosen up that bolt right there and take it out. It's probably a 14 millimeter. And of course, we are going to have a bucket down below to catch any kind of brake fluid that's going to drip so we don't make a mess on the floor. Uh, then we're going to come in here and we're going to remove that bolt right there. That's a 17 millimeter. And there's also another 17 millimeter down underneath the bottom right there. And then we'll take this off the car, remove the rotor, and then put it back together. Sounds easy and it's really not that bad. So uh, let's get started. First thing we're going to do is we're going to try to take out these screws right here. Now these screws are usually pretty tight. You can't get them out. And you don't want to strip them. So what you would do is you would take a drift such as this, put it over the top of the screw, and then you tap it. Step over here. And then it, usually it comes out. If that doesn't work, then you'll hit it a couple of more times and it'll come right out. Um, we're going to use our magnetic tray so that we don't lose anything. Now that one is a little tight. But if you have a, a tool like this, it's, it's an impact driver. You put it on the screw like this. And you hit it. And it comes right out. That driver is really not that expensive, and if you're going to do with brakes, you probably want to have something like that. Now we're going to push that piston back into the bore. Now this one here slides pretty decent, so it's not too bad. Okay, now after you have these two bolts out here, we're just going to come up underneath here with a pair of um, needle nose pliers. You can use, I use these all the time. You're not going to damage the line if you're careful, but you can always slide a rubber hose over this if you wanted to. But believe me, I've been doing this forever. 
it doesn't cause any problem. You're just going to put it on there just to crush it just a little bit. You're not going to make it real, real tight. Just enough to stop the flow of, of a brake fluid. All right. Next thing we're going to do now is we're going to take out that brake, uh, the brake line where it connects on. And that's the one that's the 14 millimeter. So we just take that off the back of the caliper. This is the bolt here. Now this we're just going to put on the side. It may come with the new bolt. I'm not really sure. Now we're going to take out these two bolts. This one here and the one on the bottom. They're both 12 millimeter. So now we just we drained out all the fluid from the caliper. It makes less of a mess if you have it drained out. And that's where the, the hose connected onto on the back of the caliper. So all right, we'll put this off to the side right now and then we'll continue. We're gonna take off that mounting bracket, the brake pads themselves are now trash. All right, and we're gonna take out that twelve uh, the seventeen millimeter here and here. Okay, that's the 17 millimeter right there, right here I should say, and there's the other one down right over here too. And then we're going to take that mounting bracket off the car and then that's trash. The slide pin on the other side, which is right up in here, is what's frozen. This one is actually pretty tight as well. Not frozen, but it's pretty tight, so we are going to change that as well. take out that bottom bolt you want to make sure that the top bolt is actually broken loose too otherwise the the mounting bracket will rotate down when you're trying to break it loose save the bolts but the bracket itself is no good. Alright now we're going to take that rotor off. You'll notice that the rotor is stuck on there. This rotor you can see the shine on it so we are going to be replacing this rotor so we don't have to worry about damaging it. You can just take a hammer, hit it here a couple times and it'll pop right off. So. Alright so that's the rotor. So we're just going to take this off to the side and we'll grab the new one. Now, you want to make sure that this part of the uh, hub itself has no rust on it. It's very important that there is no rust on here at all. Because if there is a little bit of rust and you put it on without cleaning the rust, you're going to have a pulsating brake pedal and uh, you'll wind up doing the job a second time. So take the time and make sure that that has no rust on it. Now that may look a little rusty, but it doesn't, it's really nothing that sticks up. So we are not, we're not going to do anything with that, we're just going to let that go.
Now the new rotor itself, you know, it comes with that oily film on it. It's very important that you clean that film off on there. So that's what we're going to do. Just spray it. And you can just wipe it down with a rag. Just like that. Put the rubber back on, making sure that these two bolts here line up, like that. And we'll take the screws and we'll screw them both in, like that. Now before you tighten up this screw, you want to get that second screw in. And you can just screw it in as tight as you can by hand. You can tighten it in with the uh, with your Phillips head screwdriver, but I am going to use this impact driver just to make sure it screws down a little, a little snug. Like all right. So now that's all finished. We're going to clean it up one more time. Okay, let me grab the new caliper and uh, we'll continue. Okay, I just want to point this out. The calipers are actually left and right side. You'll notice that this has the, uh, the bleeder up on top right here, so you have to make sure that you have the correct one. I'll show you what I mean. This is the one that came off, so you have to make sure that the bleeder is in the correct location, just like that. All right, and let me show you, actually, so you have an idea what I'm talking about here. This is the other one, and you see the difference? See this bleeder is up on top right here, and this bleeder is down on the bottom. It's very important that when you put these onto the vehicle that the bleeder um, itself is up on top like that. If the bleeder is not on top, you'll never be able to bleed the air out of the caliper from the bottom here. So that's why it's important to make sure you put the left and right side where it belongs. All right. Okay, when you get your new caliper, we're going to take out these bolts right here before you put this on the vehicle now. Take out these two bolts here. We're going to hold these, of course, because we're going to need them. We're going to throw away the old ones that came off. And now we're just going to take this mounting bracket here, and we have to make sure that we install the hardware kit that came with it. And you just put it over the top just like that, and you push it down just like that. Same thing on this one here. Just push it over the top. Push it in. Just like that. And now the hardware is mounted on there. Just like that. All right, now we are going to take a little bit of the brake grease and we're going to put it every place that the brake pad touches. Just like that. Okay. And now we'll go back to the car. We'll put this back onto the car itself. So, we'll take it just like this, and we're going to put our screws back through here and here. Now, before we tighten up one of the screws, we make sure both screws are caught where they, where they belong. Now, both screws have to be in that mounting bracket before you tighten it up.
Okay, so now once you have both of these bolts snug in there, then you can tighten them up nice and tight. Yeah. Alright, next thing we're going to do now is we're going to put our brake pads in here. And I just want to point this out to you. The brake pads themselves have a disc indicator on there. You want to make sure that the disc indicator is, goes in the same location that it previously was in. I'll show you what I mean. This is the brake pads and you can see that this is in a different location now. The indicator is here and this indicator is actually right here. So we know that this one is the one for the other side and not for this side. But this one, you can see, it actually is in the same location. Alright, so now we're going to put the brake pad in. We're going to slide this one in the back. We know it's the back shoe because you can see the indentation of the uh, piston touching into it. So we'll take this and put this in. And these brake pads, they go in fairly easy. Just put them in like this, push it in, you turn it, and you push it right in, just like that. And they're in. Alright, now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take out that little piece in the back right there. See this piece? Just take this out. Now this is just me, but I usually take this piece here and put it in the old caliper so that way we don't have a mess inside the shop dripping all over the place. So that's what we're going to do. Put it in the old caliper, and now we're going to take this new caliper and put it back on the vehicle. Before we put it back on the vehicle, every place that the brake pad is going to touch, I just put a little bit of grease, just like this, on here, and on this side as well, and here too. Every place that the brake pad is going to touch on the caliper, you put a little bit of the synthetic grease. And I'll just put this over the top, just like this. And then we're going to catch both top and bottom bolts before we tighten anything. Both bolts caught, now we can tighten them up. But I just want to point one thing out to you. Make sure when you put this back together that that slide pin right there is touching up against that little groove right there because this can actually, I'll show you what I mean. See the slide pin? This can actually turn sideways like that and it can actually interfere with the um, the movement or the tightening of the brake caliper so make sure that that flat part right there is in this area where it belongs like that all right both both the bottom as well as the top all right we'll tighten it up now Okay, so now we have both the top and bottom bolt are tight. We're going to install, an, it came with a new um, bolt for the caliper. Make sure you always use the new bolt because the threads could be a little bit different. And what you do is you put on one of the washers, one of the copper washers, on like that. And then you take this, and you come up underneath here, and this goes through here like this. And then you take the other copper washer, so you can see that. Let me show you again. You take the bolt like this, and you put it through here like this, and you put this other copper washer on this side right here, like that. And now I'm going to take it and screw it into the back of the caliper. Let me catch it and I'll show you what I mean. The 
take these gloves off and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, that's how the brake line goes. You have your copper washer right there. You have your other copper washer right there. This part of the brake line has to go into that little notch up on top right there. The notch that looks just like this. See this notch right here? It has to fit right through that notch right there and that holds it stationary when you try to tighten it up so it doesn't rotate. So make sure it goes right through there where it belongs. I'll show you again. Just like that, right through there. And now we're going to snug this down here and tighten it up. Okay, now you want to tighten that bolt up. You don't want to over tighten it and strip it out. So we're just going to screw it down until it touches. trash they came with the uh, the uh, new caliper came with the bolts so we're going to put these back in the box and we'll return these as well all right so that's it we're all set here Okay, we all gonna open up this bleeder valve right here. We're gonna let this uh, bleed out, grab any bleed while we do the other side. Let's see. Okay, that's good. Okay, so what we all gonna do is we all gonna let that that caliper bleed out, gravity bleed out. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, we, we are going to let that caliper bleed out. Um, just the fluid is going to come down inside there. And once it starts to drip out of that bleeder valve, we're going to close it up. And then we will put the other side together. And then we're going to need to go in the vehicle and, and bleed the brakes to make sure we have all the air out of the, uh, out of the brake the caliper before we take it for test drive. And then that's it. We're all done. All right, you may notice a little bit of smoking, a little bit of like a burning, oily type smell perfectly normal because everything is covered in, in the grease even though we cleaned it off with the brake cleaner inside the ribs here you'll still have a little bit of uh, of oil in there so you will get a little bit of smoking and that's it you're all done all right other side we're going to do it take it for road test out the door and on to the next one all right as always thanks for watching see you on the next one